why Airbnb over hotels? I stayed in 14 Airbnbs in a two and a half month time frame. I do not recommend it. But since then, I've stayed in even more. I have found out all of the ways to find what is a good Airbnb, where should I stay, what should I look for when I'm looking for an Airbnb, why Airbnb over hotels. And I also learned about how to get out of an Airbnb contract, even if it says that you can't. I got plenty of knowledge, so as the sun sets, let's get right into it. The first important thing I wanna address is why I say Airbnbs are better than hotels. One of the reasons why is because the standard of like what is a good hotel in America versus Korea, not the same. What would be considered like a three-star hotel in America is probably like a four-star hotel here in Korea. There's a lot of things about hotels that, I, that, that frustrate me so much. For example, I've talked about this, you guys know if you've watched any of my other videos. The hotel controls the temperature, usually you do not. When you go to an Airbnb, you get to control the temperature completely yourself. So if you want it to be a bit cooler, you can turn the AC on whenever you want to. If you want it to be a little warmer, you can turn the heat up whenever you want to. In hotels, they control all of that. And I mean down to the fact that they will turn off the AC system unless it's in summer. They'll turn it off in spring and in fall. So maybe they have the heat blasting. The only option you have is to open up the window. And when I tell you, mosquitoes are vicious here. Vicious. I'm not ready for them to come back, but vicious. And so I don't personally like to leave the window open when I sleep at night with the bug issues. I don't like getting all bit up. I don't like when they fly into my ears at night. So I would prefer to be able to control the temperature myself. And you can do that in an Airbnb. I think that Airbnbs can give you a better experience of what it's really like to live here in South Korea when it's your own little space. If you have any questions, you can always ask your Airbnb host. Sometimes they offer recommendations in the area. I just feel like you can have a more wholesome experience because sometimes you can even stay in a hostel on Airbnb and, and meet other people. You can stay where you actually have like a host family and you can learn a lot from them. Usually you're staying in places that are maybe a little bit more off the beaten path rather than in the extreme touristy areas and so they're less crowded. Oh, something else that's really nice about Airbnbs versus hotels is in hotels you will have a card that you will then put in this little special slot near the door so that when you're in the room, the electricity's running only. So when you leave, if you wanna like go quickly run to the store for maybe two hours and come back, when you take the card with you, everything shuts off. In Airbnbs, technically, if you just wanna leave the house really quick and you don't want the air conditioning to turn off because it's like 100 degrees outside, technically you could keep that on, it's your Airbnb. Don't like purposefully waste electricity, but just so that you know, you technically have your own freedom to control the temperature and control all of that. So that's nice. I just feel like you have more control over your space and your environment in Airbnbs. It's also nice because Airbnbs have kitchens so you can make your own food if you want to. I just love the experience and when I tell you, I'll insert some clips of some of the best Airbnbs that I've seen or stayed at. It's just such a cool experience to be able to stay in like a Korean style apartment or home. So. I'm pro Airbnb, now let me talk about how to find a good Airbnb because that is really hard too. It is so important that you look at reviews. Reviews are the most important thing. The most important thing. If you want to risk it and go for a place that has no reviews I'm gonna or, or limited reviews, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're playing with fire there. Okay, just letting you know. If it doesn't have a lot of good reviews, I really don't recommend that you stay there if you want to just make sure that it is a great place. If you don't mind that maybe it's not the best place, if you don't mind taking a bit of a risk, you can risk it. But I personally think, why worry about where you're staying? Just try to find a place that has really good reviews. If you are looking to play the risk game, if you are looking to see, okay, can I get away with somewhere that doesn't have maybe the best reviews? What are some like red flags? What are some things I should look out for? If that Airbnb has this, I should not book it at all. Here is my favorite example. Overexposed photos, I cannot tell you how fast you should run, run as fast as possible. Overexposed photos are usually showing some sort of sign of like they are trying to hide mold or trying to hide, hide like stains in the walls. This even goes to if you're looking for an apartment here, always check walls, corners. This is another tip. You should be able to see and understand the entirety of the room. So when you're swiping through the pictures, you shouldn't be like, how does that connect? 
Wait, where's the bathroom? What? It should be, you should be able to see the whole place and kind of have an overall view of what the entire Airbnb looks like. If not, they're probably hiding something. I have stayed in Airbnb. The whole entire Airbnb, like when you were swiping through, again, this was like way back when I didn't know all these tips. I was like, I don't really understand the layout of this. Like I'm a little confused. Horrible. In the pictures as you're looking, look for windows. I'm not saying it's a make it or break it, but if you don't see a lot of windows, it's probably one of the basement apartments. There's a type of style of apartment here in Korea where it's like half in the basement and then there's like tiny little windows that are in the top of the walls because it's, you know, mostly underground. Not that they're bad, they're doable. Sometimes they're super cheap Airbnbs, but I will tell you there can be a lot of just kind of smelly issues slash it's quite noisy because it's literally people can like technically walk right by where you are. And so you can hear cars going by. That obviously could happen in many, you know, Airbnbs where it's it's loud, but there's something specific about being in a basement apartment that I feel like you get so much noise. Noises from people closing doors as they're entering in the main gate, delivery drivers outside with their little scooters that they park right outside the door. And so you just hear like the motor, you know what I mean? So I just feel like they're extremely noisy. Again, if you found a basement apartment, but it has really good reviews, that's different. But the majority, when you're like, where are the windows in this place? Doesn't have a lot of reviews. You're probably gonna end up staying in a little basement apartment. And I had one that the, the mold problem was so bad. Another problem is sometimes people, because the Airbnb is not in good quality, they start to get bad reviews. They repost the Airbnb as a new Airbnb. And that's why reviews are so important is because sometimes what you're finding is it's the Airbnb, but they just reposted it. So now you're not even seeing the bad reviews. You're not even getting warned. That's why reviews are so important. If you guys haven't seen the first video that I had made a while ago about where to stay in Korea, that video is completely up to date, except for the portion about Myeongdong. It is now hopping and it's busy. I still think a lot of what I said in that video is accurate. I wouldn't stay there just because it's such a touristy area. Some other little details of things to look out for. I personally don't think it's that big of a deal, but something that does make an Airbnb or an apartment that you're looking for better is if it's near public transportation. So if you can find out where-ish, the Airbnb is, try to see if there's a subway nearby or if there's a bus stop nearby. You can even zoom in on neighbor maps and you can click on bus stops to see how many buses come to that area. You don't wanna stay somewhere that's too far away from everything because then you'll spend the majority of your time trying to get there. But at the same time, if you're in Seoul somewhere, you're very heavily connected to everything. Public transportation makes it so easy to get anywhere. So it's like, a minor tip, but if you can stay near places that are a little bit more hopping and happening, that's nice. Downside is if you're staying in the hopping and happening areas, they can be really loud. They, there can be a lot of tourists. You can end up staying in like a party hub central and a bar that's like bumping and playing the music until like five in the morning, right? Zoom in on the map and see, is this a bunch of bars nearby or are these restaurants and cute little quaint cafes? Zoom in on the map and see, okay, what's in this area? What vibe am I seeing? What vibe am I picking up on? No, I'm saying? Okay. If you are actually very curious or you're very worried about where to stay, I really do recommend booking an online consultation with me. I've sent people like screenshots of maps and I've highlighted areas that are good to stay and areas that are not but we'll save that for that because that gets way too complicated. This video will be like 65 minutes long. So if you're staying in an Airbnb, you might think that you don't have hot water or you might think that the place is just freezing and it's never gonna get hotter. You might need to go find this thing. This is the number that I want the heat to be. This is what it currently is in the apartment, but this also will control the water heater. So if it's off, you're not gonna get heat to your room and you're gonna think that all you have is cold water. Usually the Airbnbs will mark it and, and there'll be remote controls or there'll be like one of these things on the walls. So just look for one of those. Also air conditioning, you're gonna wanna find the little remote control to turn on. There's like wall air conditioning usually. So it's not central heating and cooling, it's floor heating and it's the box. There's the box that's on the wall or it's in the ceiling and you can turn that on and off. Let's say you don't like the Airbnb and you want to find a new one. You are not staying in this one anymore. Sometimes you don't have the nicest of owners. Sometimes they won't want to give you a refund, but a lot of times owners don't even know that this is something that you're capable of doing. If you say, let's you, you purchase an Airbnb for the fifth until 
the 20th and you stayed on the 5th, you don't like it, you want to leave on the 6th, you can actually message the host and the host can go in and change your checkout date to the 6th. Yes, you will have to pay the complete full cleaning fee if you maybe we're staying at an Airbnb and they gave you a discount if you stayed like longer and longer days, you're gonna have to pay probably a little bit more for that one day than you were anticipating, but it would be better to get the majority of your money back than getting no money back at all or staying somewhere that you really don't like. So message your host, talk with your host, tell them I really would like to leave. If you don't mind changing my checkout date to today, they don't get penalized for doing this and then you can also get refunded some money as well. And a lot of people don't even know that this exists. The host doesn't know that this is a thing. They think that they're gonna get in trouble if they do this. Nobody gets in trouble if they do this, if they if they switch the, the checkout date and you're able to get at least a majority of your money back. So keep that in mind. If you do wanna get out of an Airbnb, it's easier to try to just figure it out with the host and not get Airbnb involved because it's just a faster, easier way for you to get your money back and then you can find another place super quickly. If you have some Airbnb tips that I don't know about, leave them in the comments down below. Let me know if you liked the video by hitting like and leaving a comment as well. Links in the description box down below are gonna be super helpful if you're coming here to South Korea and so will this playlist full of really good information. If you're coming, I'll see you over here. Okay, bye.